Today's lesson is on inequalities, and we're going to take some notes and examples, so let's get started. The essential question that we're going to cover today is how can you represent relationships using inequalities? Okay, so let's get started. It says, what is an inequality? An inequality is a comparison of two expressions that are not strictly equal by using one of the following inequality signs. So here are the four inequality signs. You see them on the left column. The first one is greater than. When you graph inequalities, as we will, you're going to have to uh, determine what type of circle. And you have two options. You have an open circle or a closed circle based on what type of symbol you're using. Greater than uses an open circle. The second inequality sign is greater than or equal to. And in this situation, greater than or equal to, and in every situation, greater than or equal to uses a closed circle or a colored in circle. When you're, the third one is less than, and when you're graphing a less than inequality, it is also going to use an open circle. And then the last one is less than or equal to, and less than or equal to will also use a closed circle. We see a red question down here. Do you ever have to flip the inequality sign? The answer to that is absolutely yes, you do. And when you do, or when you know you have to flip the inequality sign, is when you multiply or divide by a negative coefficient. Later on in this video, we will give you an example of where you have to flip the inequality sign. So pay attention for that. Okay, so now we're going to get into some practice problems. As you notice up top, you have numbers that start at negative 13, go to negative 7.5, and they continue all the way through a positive 11. Those are possible solutions for the four inequalities that are listed below. So it says, for the following inequalities, determine which of the above values make the statement true. So the first inequality says x is greater than negative 2. So as I look at the possible values above, I would notice that negative 13 does not make it true. Negative 7 does not make it true. But negative 1 and 0 and 3 and 5 and 3 fourths and 7 and 11 all make that statement true. So, those are all possible solutions. Now, when we go to graph it, we're going to always put two hash marks. One of the hash marks is going to be the value in the inequality, which is a negative 2 in this case. The other number is always going to be 0. So, when I label my negative 2 and my 0, I'm going to have my negative 2 on the left side because it's on a number line. Then I need to figure out what kind of circle. And we talked about when it's greater than, we are doing an open circle. Now, negative 1, 0, 3, all those numbers that are in the solution set are all to the right of negative 2, so that's the direction that my arrow is going to have to go in for the solution. Let's move on to the next, the second one where it says x is less than 3. As I'm looking uh, at the possible solutions in the, in the uh, top area, I notice that negative 13 negative 7.5 and negative 1 and 0 are the possible solutions. I do not determine 3 to be a solution because the solutions here are x is less than 3 and that would not satisfy. Okay, so when we go to graph it we are going to again two hash marks we're going to pick the number 3 and we're going to pick 0. In this case 3 would be on the right side because we are dealing with a number line we're always going to put the circle on the number in the final inequality, which is 3. Since it's less than, it's an open circle. Now, the values of negative 13, negative 7.5 on this number line would all be headed to the left, so my arrow has to be going to the left to show the possible solutions. The third example says x is less than or equal to a negative 1. What values above are less than or equal to a negative 1? 
there are three, negative 13, negative 7.5, and negative 1. When I go to graph it, I'm going to use the value negative 1, and I'm going to use the value 0. I'm going to put a circle on negative 1. Since it's less than or equal to, I'm going to color the circle in. So that's what it looks like to have a colored in circle. And then my values, my arrow, will be heading to the left. The last inequality, the red one, it says x is greater than or equal to a negative 7. So what values are greater than or equal to a negative 7? Well, we have a bunch. Negative 1, 0, 3, 5 and 3 fourths, 7, and 11. When I go to graph it, I'm going to use the value 0 and negative 7. Uh, the circle, it's greater than or equal to, so it's going to be a closed circle, and my arrow is going to be headed to the right. And that is how you determine solutions and graph linear inequalities. Let's move on to our next slide. And it says, determine if 8 is a solution to the inequality 3m is greater than 21. There are two ways that you can solve this. The first way is by solving the inequality. The second way is by substituting. We're going to do both just to show you, and then we're going to graph the inequality to confirm that we're right. So on solving, we're going to write the inequality down and realize that the inequality is just like an equation. So you solve it just like you would solve an equation. I'm going to draw the line down the middle of my inequality, which is where the inequality sign is, and then I'm going to do the inverse operation of multiplying by 3, which is dividing by 3. The 3s are going to cancel out, and you're left with m is greater than 7. Now, the question was, determine if 8 is a solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 8 and insert it for my m and see that 8 is greater than 7. So yes, that is a possible solution. The second way you could do it is instead of solving the inequality, you could substitute the value of 8 into the original inequality. This is what it would look like when you do that. You would do 3 and then substitute your value of 8 in for m. And now we're going to simplify. So 3 times 8 is 24. Is 24 greater than 21? Yes, it is. And you'll notice that you get a yes in both answers, which you should because it's the same inequality and the same value that you're solving for. So your answer should be the same. To graph it, we're going to draw our line, put our two hash marks. We're actually going to go back to the red box where it says m is greater than 7 because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the solved inequality. And that's the value we're going to use. So we have our 0, we have our 7. It's greater than, so we're going to have an open circle heading to the right. And again, that value of 8 is in the shaded region or is in the arrowed region, so it would be correct. Why don't you... Try the next one on your own. Pause the video and see if 9 is a solution for the following inequality. Do it by solving as well as substituting and then show your graph. Okay, now that you did it, let's see if your information matches up with mine. So I drew the line down the middle of my inequality. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. The 4s are going to cancel out and I'm going to be left with 5m is less than or equal to 35. Divide by 5. I get m is less than or equal to 7. Now, it says tell whether 9 is a solution. So I'm going to substitute 9 in there and go 9 is less than or equal to 7. No, it's not. So 9 is not a solution for that inequality. If you substitute it or when you substitute it, you put a 5 and then 9 in parentheses plus 4 is less than or equal to 39. And then you simplify it. 5 times 9 is 45 plus 4 is less than or equal to 39. 45 plus 4 is 49, is less than or equal to 39. And again, no, that is not true, which, again, they confirm each other. On our graph, draw our line, put our two hash marks. We're going to, again, look back at that blue box. M is less than or equal to a positive 7. So we're going to use 0 and 7. It's less than or equal to, so we are going to make a colored dot and then our arrow heading to the left. And again, if we were to put 9 on this, it would be to the right side of 7, which would not be in the region of our line. Okay, we have two different, two left. So let's get after it. 
which of the following values of x is a solution for the inequality? So we have to first solve our inequality. We're going to solve it by subtracting 2 from both sides. Cancel and you get 4x is greater than 48. Divide by 4. They cancel out and you get x is greater than 12. So what I can do now since I solved it is I can look at all the values that are greater than 12. I have 10, 12, 15, and 22 and realize that 22 and 15 are my two solutions for this inequality. 10 and 12 are not. Okay, the last question that we have is a little bit more of a challenging one, so let's do it together. If you want to pause your computer and try it, go for it. Remember what I said earlier about when you divide by a negative coefficient, what needs to happen in your problem, and then see if you can come up with the answer. So my first step is subtracting 8 from both sides. I get negative 3x is greater than or equal to 6. Now I'm going to divide by a negative 3. But what I said here was when you divide by a negative coefficient, you need to flip the inequality sign. So instead of x is greater than or equal to, it's going to be x is less than or equal to. And then 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. That would be our solution. So I'm going to look at my values of x equals negative 11, positive 5, 0, and negative 2. And I'm going to identify that x equals negative 11 and x equals negative 2 would be possible solutions. If you have any questions regarding those, please watch the video again or come into class tomorrow and have questions ready for me. But you should definitely watch the video at least one more time if you're still confused. Have a good night.